Cedars are just like a seed, but you're never quite a flower. You feel more just like a weed. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Galen Lee, and you are here for another edition of Quarantine Concerts. Well, actually, Sunday Sessions, I renamed it because I want to keep these going long after COVID, so that is not the right name for a show that continues on. Um, I am really excited to welcome a special guest photographer and writer. So we usually have musicians, but once in a while I like to feature other kind of artists. And this is a friend I met in Halifax, Nova Scotia named Matt Williams. And Matt, would you want to introduce kind of what you're about and what you do? Um, yeah, anything you want people to know about you? Yeah, I am originally from Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is just like eight hours north of where you are. Yep. And uh, but now I'm on the East Coast and I write and make photographs. So um, I want to know, like, there's two. I mean, I guess they're probably connected to you, your your photography and the music love that you have. But in some ways, anyways, um, but for the music what was the role of music in your childhood or what what got you into doing writing and photography of musicians i'm curious as to like what encouraged you or what made you want to pursue that uh well i when i was probably around like 11 or so i think that i, I had decided well before that i wanted to be like angus young uh the guitarist from ACDC. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> I was like, I don't know who that is, but I know who ACDC is. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then like, I don't know, then I got like one year older and I decided that I wanted to be a writer and really never stopped. And then when I got older and started doing all of it, it just kind of all came, it, it all seemed to be like one thing or coming from one place. So I decided eventually that it didn't really make sense to say like oh, I'm one thing or the other, although I am those things. It's more like I'm someone who has to express things a certain way. And those are like the multiple mediums that I use. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think I've begun to realize, especially through doing these shows, that artists usually have more than one thing they're really interested in. And maybe one person's better known for this one thing, but it doesn't mean that they view it as like a less integral part of what they do. Like I, I like writing. That's why I'm working on a book, but I've always mm -hmm. liked writing and it's a diff it's different than performing, obviously. But for you, the photography, did you have a camera growing up very young or is that like a newer addition to your life? I did. I, I had a... Uh, um... My, actually, I still have it. It's like a, they don't make the film for it anymore, but it's my granny's old. Uh, it makes Polaroids that are kind of like that. They're kind of like oblong. Oh, yeah. Yep. They're like little rectangles. And uh, I had like point and shoot Crayola cameras and stuff. And I really enjoyed using them, but then never, uh, I never really like, there was a, there was a big span of time where I was just making music mostly. And then I started shooting more probably in my early 20s, late mid 20s. And that it's weird how the things just kind of like with the flow, like I, all of a sudden I went from making music all the time to like not wanting to make music ever. And I wanted to do this other thing all the time. So do you not make music now, really? I said that I pick, pick on my guitar when I... I love the feeling of it. I like to be able to do that. It makes me feel really good, but I haven't written music in a long time. Okay. And with photography, when, okay, so we met, maybe maybe we'll go to that part. We met at, at Halifax uh, Pop Explosion. It's a festival out in Halifax. I brought Dave Mailing with me, and he played guitar, and I played violin and sang, obviously. And um, Matt did an interview for Noisy, which is a vice publication I think and um in there he also took some photographs and so I should I show them one of the photographs yeah go for okay, it okay cool so I'm gonna get us out of here and show you so but what I want to talk about while we're looking at it is you um you do like regular film right you do you ever do digital or I do so I much? do a lot 
I shoot a lot of digital, but uh, it's usually for work. So it's like either news stuff or promo stuff, but I still do a lot of like band photographs uh, using film. And when I photographed you, it was uh, on my grandpa's old uh, Graflex Speed graphic, it's called. It's like an old Bellows. I should have got it out to show you, but it's like an old Bellows camera. It looks like an old press camera from like the 40s. Oh, and cool. Yeah, it was cool looking. I remember being like, whoa, I've never seen a camera like that. Yeah, very complicated. <laughs> kind of way more complicated to use than uh most cameras nowadays although it's also uncomplicated it's mostly like moving things around and making sure you're in focus without having without being able to see through a viewfinder or whatever uh and it so go ahead oh well and you did double exposure so i'm showing them the double exposure shot that's kind of what you mean there's no viewfinder so you how do you take those then if you don't have a viewfinder it's a lot of guessing, which I, which I still kind of like, I still really like to, you know, leave a lot up to chance with, or like a certain percentage of things up to chance when I'm photographing with film, because I don't really want it to be precise. I kind of want to work with this uh, level of uncertainty, me and the uncertainty working together to, hopefully make something that I only sort of expect and might be surprised by. So that not, so, I mean, is that the only camera you have that doesn't have a viewfinder? Uh, yes. Okay. It, I mean, it, it has a viewfinder kind of, but it's all, you don't get to look through the camera or look through, uh, like a range finder or anything. It's just kind of, guessing based on how far it's not a scale thing either this is all like complicated photography no, sorry. I, was like, terms. <laughs> I was like let's all go down the road of i mean yes uh but i guess i didn't realize how much guesswork was involved in that photo the one with the double exposure that's pretty cool um, yeah and just kind of like making sure that the light is what where the camera settings are based on the light and stuff like that yeah and that one was taken in a hotel room in case you can't tell there's like a curtain and the edge of a hotel lamp. Um, but he wanted it by the window because the light would be cooler. And I think you're totally right on about that. So um, I love that photo. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun chat. It was like a two hour interview or something. We ended up just talking, basically, is what that was. Yeah. But, Which is always my favorite kind of interview. I agree. I, I mean, because it can feel, well, A, you don't get to like the meat and bones questions until you've talked to someone for a while, I think. And then. It just doesn't feel so forced. And then you actually get to know them, which is why I wanted you to be on the show. So, <laughs> first of all, there's a few comments here that I want to let you know about. Somebody sure. really liked your hat, Tina. <laughs> um, somebody else also started listening to ACDC around the time they were 13. Um, they also said, great photo. The picture is great. Um, yeah, they just really liked it. So, I'm excited to show them more of your work. Do you have another photo that you want to share um, right off the bat? Uh, actually, well, I wanted to address Tina's comment, uh, oh, by yeah. saying, and everyone by saying thank you, but also that, uh, this is my adventure hat. <laughs> because adventure we're, hat? <laughs> yeah, we're, I got it with my friend Joel in Montreal and, uh, she, I know that she's tuned in right now. So I want to say hi to Joel. <laughs> uh, and so now I try to bring it with me on uh, adventures where I can't wear my more formal cowboy hat, which is a bit more stiff and hard, like and more annoying to wear. Yeah, I bet. Wait, so are cowboy hats in in Canada, or is this you? I don't know. I I, I like them. Okay. Uh, but I don't I don't think that there's a people. I don't know anyone else really. Rocking the cowboy hat look. No, you do good on it. I I must say, I've tried them, and I do not look good in cowboy hats. <laughs> I can say that for sure. And that, is that a suede one, then? Is it? I think it's or felt like or cheap cheap felt. Okay. Yeah. Well, it looks nice. So, good Thanks. job. Yes, Tina, good eye for the adventure hat. Yeah, I, uh, I got a hat in New Orleans that I wear similarly. The vibe of, like, this is a special occasion. I'm going to wear my hat that I got in New Orleans. I think hats are awesome, actually. So, sometimes you need to cultivate a vibe. 
It's true. It's true. I I have very few fashion tricks, but that is one of them. Occasionally, a cool hat. So I love your your flower that you always have in your hair. Thanks. You know the story of the flower? I don't think I've ever talked about this on air. So I, I started wearing them because I can't really fix my hair. Well, Paul fixes my hair now because it got so long during the pandemic that we had to figure out something. Mine too. Well, so yeah, yeah. I just can't handle it on my shoulders. I get so hot. So I had him, like, we figured out how to put it up. But the flower, before I had shorter hair, and I can't really fix my hair, so I would just clip it in, and it was easy. And people, it's funny, if you wear something bright, people are like, oh, that's beautiful. And it's just, like, a bright color. So all my dresses are exactly the same dress in different patterns. I can't <laughs> I have all the same dress in different patterns. And then the clip, um, I just have a bunch of different flower clips. But somebody said to me, that's your look. That's the Galen Lee look. And I have to admit, they were right. And I was like, okay. So now I just wear them all the time because it's like, well, that's my look. So I just got to do it. But it's a very easy look because it's literally like, what flower and what exact same dress do I (laughs) want to wear today? But uh, I still like it. I like bright colors. So that's really what drew me to all of those same things. So... That's funny. Well, uh, I also uh, love bright colors. Yeah, uh, you do. What's your favorite one? Despite that taking a lot of black, black and white I photos. I know I was going to say. <laughs> kind, of, kind of fooled me photographically anyways. Do you have a favorite color? Mm, it change, It kind of changes, but usually like uh, kind of not something just a bit darker than sky blue. Like a cerulean. Is that Very like... like clear and precise kind of yeah maybe maybe a little bit darker okay yeah i think we have the same favorite color it's like this right before it gets really dark in the sky like yeah that blue do you know what i'm talking about yeah i do yeah i think that i think it's the one yeah that's my favorite color too i wonder how many people i mean it's such a pretty color it's kind of hard to not like that color but if anyone else has a favorite color that's not that one let me know um, so wait, I'm going to get to number 12. Is that the right one? Should we do that one next? Uh, or f- four, I think. Oh yeah, four, you're right. Okay. This one is photo number four. And what is happening in this picture? I thought it was so cool. So this is, uh, a, a kind of a, it's a recreation, a very loose recreation of, uh, a photo I have of my mom who used to be, who used to trick ride. Uh, she learned in Saskatchewan, which is where my granny's from. Uh, we were talking about that a bit before we were on air was uh, that my granny's family settled in Minnesota and then moved up north to Saskatchewan. Uh, and the, I, I went to Alberta to photograph a, a young trick rider named Mackenzie Davis, who's like the national champion. Oh, wow. Uh, really? Yeah, and it was kind of, it came together really last minute. I didn't know if this shot was going to, um, if I was going to be able to get, to make this happen, but uh, her parents were really wonderful and they were able to like accommodate me and she's just really amazing at what she does. I can actually, if you, I know that the photo's up right now, huh? Yeah, but I can take us off. Do you want me to, do you want to come back in the picture? Yeah, can people see this? Yes. This is oh, yeah. my mom doing the same thing. It's called the Hippodrome. Whoa. Oh, my God. That's so scary. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey. I like to tell people that it's like skateboarding on horses. I mean, that's what it seems like. Are they always standing or are they doing other things, too? Sometimes they're hanging like under their neck and they go like around the neck and back up. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sometimes it looks like yoga on horses. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. Do they, I mean, are the horses like extra gentle then or are they amped up? Uh, They're, well, they're really, really well trained. Uh, okay. I didn't, I, I almost chose one of the next photos I chose, almost chose was uh, of the woman who taught my mom to trick ride, which is a woman named Sandy in Swanson, Saskatchewan. And she's been, her her dad, Walt, trained horses. He was a horseman for like uh, probably 85 years. Like he lived to be 105 or something. <laughs> and uh, Sandy has been uh, working with horses her whole life as well. Wow. Yeah. So that that's cool. That's a whole different like world 
I mean, I don't know anything about trick writing. That's <laughs> not yeah, a lot of so, people do. So many things you don't know. It's really crazy. So then that photo, I'm going to go back to the photo for a second before we go to the next one. Is this photo um, a similar kind of camera or is this a digital photo? This is uh, on the, it's on a big, and also like a big unwieldy camera called the Mamiya RV67, which is a medium format camera, which just means that the negatives are bigger. The film is like a bigger size. Um, and it's my favorite camera to work with. Do you have it there? I, I'm, we're off the picture now. Oh, is yeah. that it? You gonna take yeah. a picture of us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the computer? Okay, sweet. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm gonna tell a joke from Tina. What do you, uh, what do you call an angry carrot? A steamed what? veggie. <laughs> That's then, exactly my kind of joke. Yep, and then she told one last week that I didn't get to bring up, so I'll do that now while you're taking this picture. Hey, wait, wait. Move the mic away from your face just a bit and look into the camera. One, two, three. Okay, so now we'll, we'll find out what that looks like. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know. A, a week from now. A week from now. You have one that'll do an instant one, though, right? Yeah, I can do that in a bit, too. Okay, sweet. That's awesome. He's got a lot of gear. I would love to get a camera. I actually take pictures on my flip phone still, which is really sad, and someday I should invest in Whoa. some kind of <laughs> camera. They look like they're from 2002. They're real bad. but I mean, That's I mean, kind of fun, though. It is fun. Actually... This whole quarantine, I've been taking pictures of one spot because we live by Lake Superior and we have like a studio apartment in the most beautiful part of the world in Lake Superior, right? And so there's this one spot where you can see the lake and this one really pretty tree um, on the grounds of our apartment complex. There's three buildings and I go and take a picture in the same spot every day because the lake looks so different day to day, like the oh, yeah. waves and the ice and the clouds and the color and all that stuff so i've been taking a flip phone picture every day and some day i want to see if i can make a collage um kind of going through the year because it's been a year now and so the foliage changes and you know what i mean i don't know yeah i'd love might, to see that it might end up sucking but if it doesn't or even if it does i'll send it to you and you can see it yeah you should way. if you think it sucks or not i want to see okay, it okay okay i will because it's been fun to ponder if anyone will be able to notice the changes because they're subtle but they're there for sure seasonally especially um oh so the other joke that tina gave us last week was how do you know that carrots are good for your eyes i don't know have you ever seen a rabbit wearing glasses <laughs> so that one's i haven't i haven't either even our rabbit no glasses um so let's go to photo number 12 is that cool sure okay so i have it pulled up right now um, Want to give us some background? It, it looks like Tai Chi to me, but I don't know what it actually is. It is Tai Chi. My when I was a kid, so a lot of these, a lot of the photos are recreations of uh, memories that I have That's cool. that I really wanted to hold on to, but you know, it was very far after the fact. <laughs> like I don't have yeah. photographs of most of them. Yeah. Um, but when I'm when I'm my favorite memories. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents as a kid and uh, my granny is this really wonderful woman and she has this, I guess you can't see it in the photo, but it's this kind of like aqua green carpet and she would put on these Tai Chi videos and do cha Tai Chi really silently in the living room cool. uh, with like the kind of like dim lit, the sun coming through the blinds and uh, I just remember watching her and thinking that it seemed kind of like this mysterious kind of magic, magic spell kind of thing. And then I got older and I realized that, that those, those things can totally be like that. Yeah. Wait, so who is this your actual grandmother in the photo or is this somebody else helping? You? Yeah, that's my granny. Oh, it actually is. Oh, that's yeah. cool. A lot of the people are not uh, the people from their original memories but um she hasn't changed a lot uh oh. to me like she looks very similar to how she did when i was a kid that's really cool wait so there's a few questions coming in that i also have first of all if anyone listening i think that's a great idea using photography to kind of recreate memories that 
you maybe didn't have. I think that's a fun way to approach it if you're looking for like a concept. But the two questions I have is, first, why a Miyama versus a Hasselblad camera? Hasselblad? I don't know what that yeah. means. I have no That was not English to me. So do you want to explain what he meant? Yeah, uh, the, the quick answer is that a Mamiya is cheaper. <laughs> oh. uh, Hasselblad's a really expensive camera, and um, I don't have much money. So uh, <laughs> they do kind of the same thing, and the Mamiya lenses are also super wonderful and sharp, and the whole system is modular, which means I can replace different pieces of it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, it's all mechanical. So, but I think that uh, some Hasselblads are all mechanical as well. Like, there's no electronic parts. Oh, I didn't know that. What the? There's so much stuff I don't know. And then, uh, one other question: um, How much is photography planning, and how much is just seeing your seeing a, a shot and grabbing your camera quickly, like being like, "Oh crap, I need my camera." Um, I think it. Yeah. I think it either depends on the type of photographer you are, or the type of photography you're uh, practicing at that moment. So uh, like a lot of these, the photos in my book are um, very, very planned. Like uh, they're things that I meditated on and like dreamed about and thought about and wrote down. And that's kind of usually the way that I like to work. Um, I'm not much of a street photographer, although it's fun sometimes. I don't necessarily want to just show things the way they are. And that's kind of, you're at the mercy of reality, some consensus reality sometimes when you yeah. engage in street photography. And I kind of want to, want to usually show things a bit differently. That's a really good answer. I guess I, so do you do a lot of like, I know you write about music um, or you did a lot more before COVID probably, but but do you not actually take a lot of concert photography then? I, d I shot concerts like maybe three to five times a week when I lived in Toronto for at least two years. Uh, and it's really fun. I love shooting live music, but um, it also like what the way I was doing it is kind of an easy way to burn out. And, <laughs> yes. and like, it's also an easy way to burn out on live music, which I never wanted to do. I always yeah, no want to enjoy live music. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something that I look forward to doing again one day. Uh, but I haven't done it, obviously, for a while. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody has. Have you been finding creative ways to write stories about music during this time? Or have you just kind of put it on pause and then you're going to re re-dive in when the world opens up again uh there i well the one of the issues was that i pitched quite a few stories but no one was uh biting because either my idea was no good or the which i like to think wasn't the case no i don't think <laughs> but, it was. but the other thing was that like uh, uh so many publications had their freelance budget slashed so yeah um for good reason, right? Like you got to pay the people that work for the actual publication. Um, but uh, the other thing I guess was that I didn't really want to have a lot of the conversations about like creativity during COVID yeah. kind of thing. Cause it became all of a sudden like everywhere all the time. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about, it's hard to talk about something outside of that, but I kind of, I did want to pursue it. Even the thing that I'm working on now, uh, it's a profile of a guy named Lance Sampson. Yeah. Who, his band is uh, Aquaculture. He's an okay. amazing musician. Uh, and we're not really talking too much about like how things are right now, but even that interview is going to kind of address, you know, how he wants to, how he wants to, pursue his music post lockdown yeah and like whether whether he's going to tour uh or whether that's like something of the you know a different era or that has to look different or whatever um so it's uh, you know any any writing about that happens right now i think it's going to be touched by the moment but i'd also like to like push to have different conversations as well 
No, I think that's totally fair. I mean, there's a point where it's like, well, we're all going through it. So I think it's in, it, it's been interesting doing this show this year because, of course, it was born out of COVID, but I plan to keep it going after coronavirus is over just because I think talking to different artists has been really engaging for me and then also for people who watch. But But you can talk about, I mean... At some point, you're not going to talk about it the whole hour. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah you got to think about other stuff sometimes, too. So I think that's interesting. Well, I'm glad that you're doing the one the one piece now. And it seems like things are turning a corner at least a little bit, I hope. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, if any editors see me and they receive a pitch uh, <laughs> uh, sometime soon, please give me some work. <laughs> 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 yeah, no kidding. So then we have, I think, is it one more, two more photos? Let me look really quick. I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> going back to the thing. We are at number. Oh yeah, this is the last one already. Um, this is called Fifty Three, and want to explain this? I think this has the musician in it, right? Yeah, this is my uh, pal Megan Nash. She lives in Saskatchewan, uh, in the sticks. She lives like in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> uh, but it, I want to, I never really like, I haven't talked about a lot of these photos, but um, usually when I talk about them, they're, they're kind of in the rear view mirror, like we're talking about memories yeah. and uh, something that I love about this photo is that it kind of, I had just come up from Montana uh, and the plan was to stay with Megan, but I was I had some border trouble with some over eager border guards. Oh no. And yeah. And, uh, so I, I was coming to the end of this huge trip where I had like gone through all these memories and then the like weird thing at the border was kind of put me in an even stranger mindset. And then after that, like getting to Megan's is like you drive from the, from the border where I was to through like just fields of cows for that are roaming free that you're on someone else's dirt road for like two hours to even get to a main road. And then it's, you know, more hours to where I was going. Really? Like hours on a dirt road? Yeah. Whoa. Because I couldn't drive any faster and I didn't want to hit yeah. any of these cows. No kidding. Um, so when I got to Megan's and I was there for, I was only going to stay for like two days, but I think I ended up staying for like five and just being in that, in like a really welcoming space. And also at the end of kind of like the very end of that trip or journey or whatever you want to call it. Um, it, it felt like a really liminal space, like a, like the boundary between, you know, one thing and the next. Yeah. And so I didn't originally mean to take that photo, but it's one of the only photos in the collection that's kind of based on a memory that actually happened uh while i was on the trip and i also wanted to share it because i wanted to give a shout out to megan because uh, she's such a great musician and i think that her spotify link is in the uh youtube yep, description it's, yep it's in the youtube description and then at the beginning of the chat too so people can take a listen she does string music right Am I wrong about that? Uh, no, she's, it's kind of like really lush. Uh, some people may call it like Baroque pop. It's really like beautiful. She has a great band, backing band called, uh, who are, I don't know if they're all in this, in this band, Bears, Bears and Hazenmore. Okay. But those guys are all like number one, all time world-class players, all in Ooh. Saskatchewan. Yay. Well, then people will now get to check her out, too, which is a neat thing to share the spotlight. But I get I get that if it's like a meaningful memory and a good friend. And she did. A, OK, so let's before we have to leave, I do want to talk about this photo book. So you made a photo book. How like did it come out this year or was it last year? Uh, Late last year. Late last year. OK, so. um. Is that a pretty big undertaking? I mean, did you have a vision for it? Because I noticed we can look at the cover. I think you're about to take another photo now. Is this true? Yeah, I could. Okay, well, just so it, it develops by the yeah. time that we're yeah. done. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. 
Okay, I'll show you that when I when it shows up. Awesome. But I could also show yeah the photo book. It was a uh, uh, project. Um, it was really like at first it was kind of a holding on to your memories project. Yeah. Um, like some sort of way to make sure that I remember things because my mind is not so. It's not. It's sharp, but it's not like. I can't reach into it's it's also like everyone's it's flawed yes uh, not a steel trap no and I and so I wanted to take those um take all those memories and make sure that I had like a version of them uh and then it became like very different than that because it because it, I think every time I try to embark on a project I want to I don't want it to be like because the things are going to look cool or the things uh, like I want to learn something from it. And I think what I learned going through all these, all of my own memories, which are um, not reliable uh, and all these versions of me just made me come to the conclusion that there is no real like Matt there's no like Matt who looks like this all the time. He, that doesn't exist. Like as soon as I get off this call, I'm a different person, right? Yeah. That's so even cool. though I, yeah, even though I want to think, and I and I do think that like moment to moment, I'm giving people, and you know, I'm being present with people. Um, you still change in every one of those moments, and so I did. I want it kind of gifted me this, uh, the idea that I didn't have to think of myself as static or um forever one thing and not another that kind of thing yeah and, no, that's cool yeah and so now it's nice to look back on and see like all these different versions of myself you can become acquainted with you know different mats different mats so what is the title <laughs> the title and the cover are really striking it's called two rivers is that to do where where you're from or what's the what's the significance of that yeah, so this is the Assiniboine River, and this is the Red River, and the this is in Winnipeg they call it the Forks, um, which has been a meeting place. You know, was a mid meeting place for the indigenous people there long, long before uh, any settlers were there. It's kind of like a very special place, and so. A lot of this project involved going back to places that were important to me in my over my life, and that includes, you know, mostly Manitoba. But um, it also uh, eventually made me think about the fact that uh, memory and dream or thought or imagination, let's say, those two things are kind of like intertwined. All my memories are colored by my imagination. All my imagination is colored by my memories. Yeah. And so those are just two two other rivers, which is why I gave it the name Two Rivers. I really like that. So did you write ex explanations of the photos? Because I haven't seen the inside of the photo book. Or is it just pictures? There's. Uh, I wrote a little intro just talking about um, the project and... Uh, what I felt like I took away from it and what I hoped that uh, other people might take away because I didn't want, I don't want this to be like just all about me either. It doesn't make it fun for other people to, or interesting or compelling for other people to dig into. Yeah. Um, and then there's an essay by my friend, Kate Leahy, who's a really brilliant writer in St. John's Newfoundland about um, memory and trauma and all sorts of things that uh, really like adds a adds a much deeper layer to the whole project and a soundtrack right a lot, like yeah my friend yeah my friend Laura C Bates uh, in Toronto she uh, created wrote wrote and recorded with uh, another person another player named Zoe Santos and recorded by a band uh, Laura's bandmate Lucas Gadke. Um, is there's a so there's a score a violin and viola score for the project to cool. that's available with every book that's so cool and the links to the book are in the also the video description and at the beginning of the chat because i think that's just a cool 
it's cool to have all this concept. And I totally agree with you. I'm working on a memoir right now, and I'm in early childhood still. Um, but it's going to bounce around, I think, between touring and early, earlier stuff. And I, cool. it's, it's really weird how you remember something, and then your parents read it, and they're like, uh, that is not what happened, or it was actually yeah. here, or like, and you're just like, whoa, this part of my brain that like has built an identity on these memories that I have, I, it's not always based in like reality. And then <laughs> yeah. you're, you're like, whoa, that, so it does make you think a lot about like, what does that mean? I mean, maybe it doesn't change anything about, it does, I mean, it can change something, I suppose. It doesn't make me feel less authentic, but it does kind of remind you just how I just I just hope someday when we die we get to like actually see the replay. I am <laughs> yeah actually so yeah that um, would be great. <laughs> yes. Um. So my last question is, where would Matt like to see his work? Galleries, magazines, album covers, uh, things like this photo book project. Is this kind of where you oh. dream? I don't know. Maybe you haven't thought about that so much, but well, well, my favorite place for the photos to live are in books. So I'd like to make more books, but I like, like I, my, some of my photos have been to album art and I really love, uh, I'd love to work with any of, in any of those mediums, like show the, actually show the work, have it in albums, have it in mag. I mean, I've also had work in magazines, but it's not this kind of, not this work. Not it's the more like conceptual like, stuff. Yeah. Um, Here's oh yeah, let's see. Did it work? Can you see? Yeah, it's done. <laughs> Yay! You should email me a picture of that later if you don't mind. Yeah, I'll awesome. scan it. Cool. Oh, well, Matt, it was so nice to chat with you. Um, anything you want to share with people before we switch over to the music part of this event? I guess. Yeah. Have you noticed my uh, girlfriend's sneaky child photo in the background? <laughs> no, but now I <laughs> do. It's just her looking uh, like she's up to no good. So that was actually placed there for this show? No, it was an accident. And then I looked over my shoulder uh, and realized that it had been watching the whole time. <laughs> well, that is the way that the world works. She's in the show, too, then. What's her name? <laughs> Have, I haven't met her yet, right? Grace. No, I, 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 maybe I tried to get her out, but she works in the music biz. Like the maybe I tried to get her out to your show when when I saw you at the Carlton, but yeah. she might have been doing something else. Okay, well I'll have to meet her next time we go out there. Yeah, when or when I come to you. Minnesota. <laughs> you should. I mean, you, it's cool that you actually have a Minnesota connection because it's a pretty. Do you know? Do you remember what part of Minnesota they settled in when they were here originally? No, but it would have been in the, I think the late eighteen hundreds. Whoa, so it's but like, um. Yeah, and I think that I, I think that there might be some family still there, but a lot of them moved north. Um, my the only time I've actually been to Minnesota was, or I've been there twice. One was once was to just catch a flight, but the first time I was like eighteen years old, and I went to St. Paul to see Bruce Springsteen and the East e Street Band while Clarence Clemens was still alive Whoa. Uh, at the Excel Energy Center. <laughs> So, I mean, that's a very cool concert. I'm, I'm sure it was fun, right? It was really fun, yeah. Yeah, but that's not where I would be like, in Minnesota, you know what you have to check out? Is the yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Simon and Garfunkel there. They got I, I was always so sad. I was obsessed with them as a kid. And then I was like, I'll never get to see them. And then they got back together for a year. I think they kind of hated each other is the vibe that you yeah. kind of got. But it was still cool to hear them sing those songs. Live, I think I cried through. I was like in the nosebleeds, crying through like the entire concert. It, was it would be really cool. It was cool. I mean, I'm I'm just so glad that I got to do that because there's some artists where you just missed the boat. They're not alive anymore, and you're like, yeah, oh, okay. So I'm glad I saw it, even though it was like kind of an awkward vibe. Um, they didn't really talk to each other, and maybe maybe it was just from being way up high. It couldn't really feel out of the emotion but the music was beautiful and it was cool to see them live so yeah i bet yeah oh well i'm so glad that we get to talk and people really enjoyed this chat they said that it's it's art uh what what did you say i guess that what it is art photos music or painting is what it means which is what how it's perceived and makes you feel and think so yeah it is kind of more art is more about like 
what perceptions it brings you then like whether or not it's reflecting something totally accurately right or like yeah i think yeah, so yeah it's fun well this was super interesting and i hope we see i mean i'll let you know when i'm coming to canada and you better let me know if you're visiting minnesota yeah of course um, yeah yeah cool well thank you matt and um i'm gonna get ready to play a couple tunes before we leave but thanks for being here with me great thanks cool. for talking it was really nice to see you really really nice to see you thank you so much take care bye bye we, that was so fun. Um, I'm getting set up here. So, uh, if you guys enjoyed that conversation and his work, please, please check it out, including that Spotify link. And then any tips that you donate today are going to be split with Matt um, and throughout the week, too. So, please uh, tip generously if you can. And I'm going to get ready. Here we go. Oh yeah, can you touch the um, the white words like the in the middle? Just click on it once. There we go. Um, and then this. Um, I'll just need the microphone. And then that way, I think. Thank you. And then up a little bit. Sorry. Getting the set up one second. Thank you. And then I guess I just need the music stand. Then we're good. Cool. Okay, so it's transition time. Someday, when I get more organized, I'm going to have a video or something that plays <laughs> while I'm getting set up. But haven't done that yet. So thank you so much to Matt for doing this. Um, as you know, this show is sponsored in part by Sweetwater um, Music. They do instruments and tech gear. And so um, I really appreciate their sponsorship. Chuck and Lisa Serac are the owners of that. And um, by my Patreon, um, I have a Patreon, which is really fun. So if you're interested in learning more about the behind the scenes stuff, um, please consider joining Patreon. I have one sponsor in particular who donates at the shooting star level, um, Sean Anderson. And so thank you to her for supporting my work on a pretty big level. Um, and yeah, as I said, all the tips are going to be split with Matt. So I thought I'd do a couple songs before we sign off. Um, this was a really interesting combo, and I'm going to be thinking about it for a while. This song is called Dark to Light and Dark Again, and it's on my uh, 2018 album, Learning How to Stay. Muscles, nerves, and skin and bones They carry us on our journey home Day by day They sustain us in the end They betray us But our bodies They never fully contain us We rise above that matter Which seeks to detain us From the truth from the love, from each other, from above We're everything all at once We need not fear the end when it comes Dark to light and dark again I'll change in tides until the end Take it in, don't close your eyes And piece by piece shut your disguise Till your spirit is what remains 
burning brighter than all of your pain. Silence may confine you, but it will not define who you have been. The love you have created when memories have faded will remain. Traveling down this winding road, the destination is not ours to know, but it's shaped by those who guide us, take us in, come beside us, for no matter how much we have grown, we cannot do it all on our own. We cannot do it all on our own. We cannot do it all on our own. There you go. Um, that is Dark to Light and Dark Again. It's actually kind of like a country vibe when I play it with a guitarist, but... That's the solo looped version, uh, which is fun to do too. And I haven't done it in a really long time, so I thought I'd perform it for you. Um, the next tune is um, called, oh, I forgot to tell the captioner how to spell this, Howling from Exerod. So H-A-L-L-I-N-G, and then from Exerod, which is, I think, E-K-S-H-A-R. A-D or something like that. And it's a Swedish tune. So Matt and I were talking before the show about how um, Scandinavian music has this kind of unique, eerie sound to it, or just a different tonality. Um, and I love Celtic music, but I have also been enamored with um, Scandinavian music. And although I don't know a ton of it, this is one of the tunes I know. So here we go. This is Howling from Exerad. Thank you. 
There you go. That is a traditional Swedish tune called Hulling from Exerod, which I think is quite eerie, and I like it a lot. Um, there you go. Trying to get my pedal rearranged. Okay. So, this is the last song of the day, and then I'll be back next week, um, which is Easter, which I wasn't in- realizing it was Easter until I had already booked it, but I like doing shows every week, so... We'll have a semi-Easter theme, um, but there's a lady named uh, Ellen Stanley. Her artist name is Mother Banjo, and she's a great folk artist, and she is from Minneapolis, and she'll be with us on April 4th, same time, 2 p.m. Central Time, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. in uh, Eastern Time, 4 p.m. in Halifax, and 8 p.m. in the U.K. So this is the last song of the night. It's called The Long Way Around. Um, Yeah, I think that song is very imagery heavy. People are saying that there's a lot of imagery for them, and I agree. That's one of the reasons it kind of sucks you in. So um, let me do The Long Way Around for you. This is a song I wrote about friendships that take work but are worth it in the end. When two souls meet and the whole world feels new, shared moments sweet, all colors bright and true, and there is laughter, and there are good things growing everywhere. And I'm happy to be in this place with you and I'm happy to be in this place What's this all about? And you're making me unstable And I don't want to go down this road with you No, I don't want to go down this road I want to go But I can't And I won't all learn to so up the woods, but I broke open with you. 
because I knew and I chose and I don't feel at home in this world anymore. No, I don't feel at home in this world. We rain it in, and there is better understanding. Nobody wins if there is flight without the landing. And we learn to keep our hearts in time, try not to burn the careful ties that bind us together. And I'm taking the long way around with you. And I'm taking the long way around. And I'm happy to be in this place with you. And I'm taking the long way around. There you go. Um, that is The Long Way Around, a song that I wrote a few years back. And I think I will do um, probably some sort of improvisation next week. I'm in a couple springy songs. Ron uh, is asking for songs about spring and rebirth. And I think, uh, especially since it will be Easter, I will probably incorporate at least something along those lines so thank you so much for hanging out with me today thanks again to matt williams if you enjoyed the show please leave a tip um, at any of the links in the video description or um in the chat because we will i'll be splitting them with him um in the next couple of days so thank you so much for watching take care see you next week with mother bank